Well, thanks so much for joining us this week for uh, the, our workshop here, uh, all things cryoelectron tomography. Uh, so I'm Elizabeth Wright. I'm a professor here in biochemistry, uh, director of our cryoEM centers. And so we really are welcoming you here to Madison and the most Madison, Wisconsin way. So, you know, when, when we said we wanted to do a cryoelectron tomography workshop, the weather said, how can we help? And so today you, you get snow uh, for, for uh, this workshop. But I think the weather is supposed to warm up just a little bit and, and the snow is supposed to go away. Uh, so I'm gonna be really brief in all of the things and just highlight uh, what we're doing this week so that then we can have most of the time spent with our speakers today. So I really wanna acknowledge all of the members of our team here in the CryoEM centers, the Wright Lab, and then our, our fearless uh, thermo, uh, service engineers who, who keep the microscopes up and running. And, and everyone has been really amazing the last months, getting everything ready to go uh, so that you will have a wonderful week in this workshop, learning about all the different flavors of, of cryo-ET and how to apply it to your various biological questions. Okay, so uh, you have gotten a very quick view in your packets. You will see that you have a map that is a more exhaustive map of our facilities here on campus. Uh, but you will be basically focused on being in these two buildings here where all the microscopes, our, our office space and computational space is, as well as where you're going to have your meals. Um, and of course, you're all kind of living over here. And so we have the two uh, cryo-EM centers here. We have the UW Center, where we're kind of highlighting what we have here on this side, uh, where we have our Creos, our Artica, L120, and then a cryo -clum system. And if you wanna see any of those tools, don't hesitate to ask any one of our team members. We're happy to show you those. But you're really here to, to play with these instruments this week. Uh, so you'll be able to uh, learn how to use the Oculos, uh, we'll have Leica here to teach you on how to use the cryoconfocal on Thursday. And then, of course, you'll have time with several really uh, fun members of our community team here to teach you how to use the G4 for various data collection routines, as well as the computational work on the back end. So I think you'll, you'll be saturated with cryo-ET by the time you, you leave, but we hope you come back in the future. Okay. And so... I think many of us show this slide of where we're at in the field today of structural biology. We're really able to go from atoms to cells. And I'm only giving the briefest of overview talks today because you have so many amazing talks over the next couple of days that really show you how you can use these technologies and apply different techniques to really bridge from the atomic level resolution all the way up to the cellular regime. Now, of course, all of us in this room are really excited and, and really focused on using cryo-electron tomography, where we were focused in blobology space for many, many years, but now we can achieve a, you know, atomic resolution on, on many structures. Uh, one of the other focus areas we'll highlight this week is, of course, bridging between uh, fluorescence light microscopy uh, using cryo-ET uh, and fib milling techniques. And so hopefully not every one of the, the next speakers will give this slide, but what is cryo-electron tomography? Well, it's one of the premier cryo-EM techniques. And this is where we, of course, like all of the other techniques, we rapidly freeze a sample uh, with liquid ethane, uh, propane jets, uh, or high pressure freezing. And so the sample is frozen in this thin layer of vitreous ice. Uh, but then this is where we're looking at the uniquely shaped objects. So things where each one is its individual person. And the technique that we use to address studying these structures in 3D is tomography. So we tilt the sample in the electron microscope. Typically, well, originally we were going as maximum tilt as possible. So plus minus 70 degrees. But I think through Zen Long's talk and Alberto's talk, you'll hear about different techniques of how you change this tilt regime to be able to capitalize catching, uh, collecting data in different views, but also being able to extract that information and do additional computational techniques on the back end. But before we even go into the cryo microscope and, and collect our data, we really do a lot of work on the front end of how we 
we uh, process the sample. And so we go through, through the workshop, you really be able to see many of these work show, show, many of these workflows in, in process and be able to use them with your own hands to think about how you bring them back to your own laboratory um, when you go back home in a couple of days. And so I'm just gonna highlight what we're doing in each of the morning talks and, and some, some quick views. So this morning we'll have Alberto's and Long and Matt talk, and they'll be talking about, again, these different data collection techniques, how you process this, these data points to then generate uh, high resolution structures. Um, and so here is a tilt series of a mouse uh, cortical neuron neuride. And so maybe by the end of your time here, you'll be able to think about how you'll process your sample uh, with specimen preparation and think about collecting this data, this type of data, so then you can generate a reconstruction of it in 3D. And on Tuesday morning, we'll, we'll uh, focus on cryofib milling and then volume visualization. So Veronica and Jay will really highlight the value of using the FibSim technologies to really mill your sample to regions that you're interested in and maybe using uh, cryoclem beforehand or while you're actually doing the milling process. And so this is very powerful if you have fluorescent tags, targeting that region that you're interested in uh, for uh, generating a thinner volume uh, for TOMO data collection. And then Alex Hall will round up in the afternoon with talking about a next segment of visualization and using a mirror to segment or render your reconstructions to get the most information out of them because uh, you're really collecting these beautiful landscapes of cells. So I'll just highlight what cryofib milling is. You'll get you know, hands-on view of these systems. So these are dual beam systems where down uh, the top column axis, you have your scanning electron microscope. On an orthogonal axis, you have well, uh, the focused ion beam instrument. These are gallium ion instruments that you'll be using here. And so we use these tools to uh, image the surface topology of the sample to find the particular places that you actually want to do your fib milling, locate those cells of interest, and then decide how thick or thin you want to mill them, and then you'll go through the process of milling them. And so we have some really beautiful uh, technologies using AutoTim that Sergey and Veronica will teach you how to use to really automate this routine to make it very efficient uh, in the milling process. Those of you who may have used these instruments without AutoTim know that this is the, the best thing in the world to be able to use this so you can really maximize your output of lamella uh, for your downstream imaging. And so uh, we have two Oculo systems here. One of them has an integrated fluorescence microscope. And so this is some work that Jay and Veronica did, and they'll show you how to accomplish this with these tools, where we have a fib milled HeLa cell, where uh, we have fluorescent markers of different uh, positions in this cell to target regions that we're interested in. We can overlay these maps uh, in the electron microscope and then collect the subsequent tomography data of those cells. Of course, as I mentioned, Alex will show you uh, all the ways you can use Amira to generate uh, beautiful segmentations and renderings of cells, but then also be able to get quantitative information out of them. So then on Wednesday, uh, we have four talks in the morning. So Marissa Otegu will, will bring us forward with high pressure freezing. So much of the work we do if we're looking at very thin samples, isolated cells, uh, cells grown on grids, we do plunge freezing. But if we're thinking about going into thicker space, maybe we're growing biofilms on grids or looking at tissue level uh, samples, then we wanna use high pressure freezing. So she'll give us a real great introduction to high pressure freezing. In the afternoons, you'll be able to see how high pressure freezing works and freeze those. Then Brian will follow up with uh, how we use micro patterning to direct where cells grow on grids. So this can be very uh, important for particular biological questions you're in, but also thinking about process. So if you're going from cells grown in really organized arrays 
then you can fib mill more efficiently to then be able to collect your tomography data afterwards. Uh, and then uh, in the second part, Laura Ann will talk to us about various parts of how we use cryofluorescence techniques to design those experiments. Maybe you're designing new tags or labels to then get spectroscopic as well as fluorescence imaging data. And then uh, Deja will be with us remotely uh, and she'll uh, demonstrate the waffle method and how we can use that to better fit mill samples in, in particular space. So just highlighting these tools, uh, you'll be able to see the high pressure and use the high pressure freezer in action. Uh, on Thursday morning, we have the breakout for learning how to micro pattern, but please don't hesitate to connect with Brian, Jay, or, or Joe. I don't think he's in the audience yet about different ways of micro patterning in particular systems. Then again, Laura Ann will show us some of her cryofluorescence workflows, past work and current work. And then Deja will, will highlight the walk milling method. Uh, so as you all know, you, you come here because we're the Midwest Center for Cryo-Electron Tomography. So this is a uh, NIH funded national center. I've highlighted the, all the national centers that are around the country. So we have the, the four cryo-ET centers where uh, Madison is the hub center. So we have the data collection microscope, but all four centers can help you with specimen preparation, fib milling, data analysis, everything. You would just ideally come here to, to collect data unless you have your home tools. Uh, then we have the original cryo-EM centers. So NCCAT, uh, PNCC and S2C2. And of course we have the curriculum development centers. So we're a really bridged network where we take technologies, transfer them to, between each other. And then all we, we also blend how we teach our community how to use cryo-EM and cryo-ET techniques for their particular biological questions. So the cryo-ET centers were coming up on our Q2 application deadline. So if you all have ideas this week while you're, you're working in the lab of something that you want to put in an application for, please don't hesitate to connect with any of us on the, the Madison team and we'll help you build out that application. It is April 21st, it's just around the corner. It's that Friday, I don't wanna think about it. Um, but uh, this is a really great way to, to use the network. Uh, it's free to use all of these resources. All you need to do is travel to our site or we can even do remote work with you. If you have tools at home, we can teach you how to use the equipment. And if you don't know uh, the portal, so this is our web address. Uh, so you can um, put in an application or just be part of the community so that then you learn more about cryo-ET and the various tools that you can use. Um, so please don't hesitate to reach us either through the portal or through our, our merged uh, email address. And just in case you didn't know who we were, uh, this is us here in Madison. Uh, luckily, uh, the lakes aren't frozen anymore, but they're too cold to probably go into, but we're really happy to have you here. And so I know we're, we're early, but if does anyone have any questions about the week, expectations, or otherwise, I'll allow our first speaker to get, get going. <laughs> <laughs> 